Hello everybody, and it's so good to connect with you all once again. Today is Friday, and a very special Friday because it is Good Friday. Uh, not just any Friday, but a, a Good Friday. So thank God it's Friday. Thank God I'm free because of Jesus. Now, so we are continuing on in our series, A New Dawn. And today's Good Friday devotional thoughts were centered around another item associated with Jesus' sufferings and death. That is, the curtain in the temple that was rent in two. Now, curtains are found in every home and they come in all kinds of shapes, colors, uh, and patterns. Now, though they add beauty to the room, their primary function is to shut out the outside elements from coming into the room. Uh, for example, like sunlight, or probably prying eyes of inquisitive neighbors and passers-by. Now, curtains are not only found in homes, but in offices, restaurants, churches, and temples. And one such curtain in a temple was the will that was associated with Jesus' death on the cross. Now, let us turn our attention to Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 46, and I read, It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, simply meaning from 12 noon to 3 p.m. 
for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now when he said this, he breathed his last. Now I want to just give you a layout of the temple in the Old Testament, the outer courtyard. Um, then we, we have the tent or the tabernacle proper, measuring some 45 by 15, housing uh, 15 feet, housing the holy place and the most holy place, what is better known as the Holy of Holies. And there was a curtain separating the holy place from the most holy place or the Holy of Holies. It has been said that the, ho the Holy of Holies uh, during the uh, Exodus in the tabernacle measured 15 by 15 feet, or 15, 15, 15 feet. So this curtain in the tabernacle was 15 by 15 feet. 15 feet wide and 15 feet high. That's quite high, isn't it? Now we'll come back to this a bit later. Now, curtain has another function besides beautifying a room and providing protection from the rays of the piercing sun as well as prying eyes. Now that is, curtain also serves as a form of demarcation uh, for the purpose of making a particular space private or exclusive. So we have thus far said that curtains are meant to shut out the outside elements from coming in. Uh, curtain also serves as a form of demarcation. And the curtain of the temple certainly did just that. He set apart the Holy of Holies from the holy place and from all the other premise in the temple. And except for the high priest, not even Moses, mind you, and only once a year, the rest of the Israelites were shut out or not allowed to enter the Holy of Holies ever. Now, now a spectacular event took place within the temple uh, when Jesus died that day, we read uh, in our opening scripture words in Luke chapter 23 and 45 that the curtain separating the holy place from the most holy place was torn in two, meaning that access into the holy of holies is now open to all, not just the high priest. Reading from Matthew chapter 27, verse uh, 50 and 51. It says, when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Another scripture verse of the same event, Mark chapter 15, uh, verse 37 to 39. It says, with a loud voice, Jesus breathed his last. And the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. You see, Jesus' piercing cry was met with an equally deafening sound, a ripping sound in the temple. The veil, the curtain was torn in two. Now, the significance from top to bottom of the temple uh, is really amazing. Uh, we earlier said that the tabernacle, in the tabernacle, the dimension of the Holy of Holies was 15 by 15 by 15. 15 feet wide, 15 feet long, uh, deep, and 15 feet high. Uh, the Holy of Holies in Solomon's temple, uh, I was said that it, it was a little bit bigger. It measured 30 by 30, so 30 feet high. Herod's temple, during Jesus' time, according to historian Josephus, was 60 feet high. That's very high, isn't it? 60 feet is almost like... Uh, from where, I'm, from where I'm sitting here uh, in the sanctuary, right to the end uh, uh, of the doors leading out uh, to the courtyard, is about 50 feet. So can you imagine that kind of a height, 60 feet. From top to bottom, uh, the Bible says that the veil or the curtain was rent into two. Uh, simply meaning that only God could have done it can could have done that. You see, friends, curtains are really hard to, try, to tear. Uh, I give you permission. I'm not sure if your parents will give you the permission or your wife will get upset. Uh, sometime this week, try tearing a particular curtain 
in your house. Maybe choose the best one to upset your wife. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, but really, uh, curtains are very hard to tear. And to, to stop people from looking into the Holy of Holies, uh, some have said that the thickness of the curtain was something like close to four inches. We, we can't really verify that. But one thing for sure we know, uh, that it was a very thick curtain and a very, very long and tall one too. Now, our series is A New Dawn. And certainly, uh, with the ripping of the curtain in the temple, uh, it uh, heralded a new day, a new dawn, in the way people reached out to God and the way uh, we would actually have access into the presence of God. I'll leave with you a few things in this devotion. One is this, uh, certainly with the ripping of the temple wheel or the curtain, you know, with that new dawn, uh, there is a change in the way we worship, change in the way we worship. Uh, Jesus being the perfect, ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world away. See, friends, uh, we no longer come into the presence of God, no longer approach God as in the Old Testament with animal sacrifices uh, uh, and blood of, of a lamb and goats. Uh, these days, we don't do that anymore because uh, Jesus has done it all. And all we have to do in our approach to God is change the way we worship. We don't bring an animal sacrifice. But our bodies, as the book of Romans says, you know, we present it as a living sacrifice. Not dead sacrifices, but a living sacrifice. Hey, you know, Jesus wants you to live your life for Him. We all would die one day, so make sure that we live every day for Jesus. It also changed, there was also a change in priesthood. Uh, Jesus now is our high priest. And we, every single one who has accepted Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, every believer, every Christian, is now a priest unto God. You see, in the Old Testament, God gave the people a priesthood, Aaron and his sons. But in the New Testament, God gave, God gave the people as a priesthood. In other words, you know, each one of us, we are priests of the living God with Jesus, our high priest. It also changed our approach uh, in our relationship with God, in approaching God. You see, when the curtain was torn from top downwards, it simply suggests it was not a work or doing of men, of humankind. But it was ran from top to bottom, signifying it was a doing of God. How would anyone tear a curtain that is 60 feet tall, and some say probably a few inches thick? There's no way human beings can ever do that. So in our approach to God, and into God's throne of grace. We, we don't do it in our own strength. Christianity is not man trying in his best and in his best of efforts trying to reach God because our best of our best is never good enough for God. But Christianity is God reaching down to man. And that's exactly what God did when the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. So it's not by works but it is by grace that we are saved. Not with fear and trembling, but with awe and gratitude and faith and thanksgiving, we come into the presence of God. It changed the way we worship. It's just amazing. It is just amazing. It also changed the frequency in which we approach our living God. In the Old Testament and before Jesus uh, died on the cross and before he uttered those powerful words, it is finished, you know, it was only the high priest who can only enter the Holy of the Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was, where God's presence dwelt. He only could do it once a year. No more than that. But today we can then have access into the presence of God. No wonder Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, 
let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence with confidence church so that we may receive mercy and find help in our time of need in other words any time any time when we have a need and even when don't have a need you know we can just approach and come directly into the presence of god you know when i thought of this uh, series entitled a new dawn my mind couldn't help but to go to this song called feeling good by michael blubley uh, the lyrics of the chorus says, It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I am feeling good. I think Michael Bublé probably uh, doesn't understand the full extent you know, of a new dawn, because he, he were to, and we pray that he will one day, just like you and I have come into this saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, a new dawn is this, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I am feeling blessed. And certainly we are because of the curtain, because of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was born not so much to live, but to die so that we might have life. I'm going to close with Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 to 25, a very powerful passage. And here, uh, the word curtain once again appear. It says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is His body. Friends, you see, what has happened is that when Jesus' body was torn apart and broken for us on the cross, you know, the curtain, the will was torn apart. And verse 21 of Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 21 onwards to 25, and says, since we have a great high priest over the house of God, then let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith, having a heart sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unservingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another towards good deeds. And then it says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. We indeed are so blessed to have this access into the presence of God. No, it is not just a high priest. Uh, in fact, Moses in all of his splendor and, uh, and status, uh, he, wasn't, he even wasn't allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. Uh, but here, no, we can assess in the very presence of God anytime, anywhere. In fact, God, God dwells in us and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it is a new dawn, it is a new day, it is a new life church, and we are indeed blessed of the Lord. In a short while, we're going to partake communion. I trust that we'll celebrate this wonderful Savior who died on the cross who obeyed and submitted himself to the will of God so that you and I might have eternal life. What a saviour, what a message, a new dawn in Christ. God bless you, church.
church uh, once again is a time where we want to uh, break bread together and we also want to take time to be thankful to Jesus and remember him for what he has done on the cross and we do it by doing what he told us to do that is to observe Holy Communion because he says uh, take it this my body do it in remembrance of me of course remembering Paul's word Two, he says that as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do portray the Lord's death till he come again. And so church, uh, the very basis and the very intent of the communion service basically is to take time to remember Jesus. So let's look to the Lord and just take time to just be thankful, be grateful to him for all that he has done. So just take a few moments expressing your love and thanksgiving to Jesus. Amen. 
Bible says on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave it to the disciples and says, take it, this is my body. Father, we thank you for the finished work at Calvary. Jesus, we thank you that through your blood, our sins are forgiven. Lord, through your blood, we have access into the very presence of God. In your body, like the curtain, Lord, was broken, torn apart, so that we can enter into the very presence of God. Bless this bread, bless this emblem that signifies your body. And God, we also want to believe you for miracles, for physical healing. And we pray, God, you touch sick bodies, even here and now, as we eat this bread and as we do it in remembrance of Jesus. Church, let's eat of the bread in remembrance of Jesus. Also the cup, let's drink of it in remembrance of Jesus and in anticipation of His coming again. Amen and amen and amen. Father, we certainly want to thank you for the finished work at Calvary. Jesus, we thank you, dear God, for so wonderfully, so amazingly powerful when you say it is finished. And God, we thank you, dear God, that you completed the work that your Father sent you to do. And we pray, dear God, that likewise, we would also say, like you said, my meat, my will is to do the Father's work and finish it. And so, Lord, once again, we thank you. And we pray, dear God, that you will continue to help us each day, Lord, to be thankful Lord, to be faithful. Lord, oh God, to be appreciative of the finished work of Calvary. Continue, let your blessings, your grace flow through our lives and continue, Lord, to help us always, Lord, to remember, to love you and to serve you. We ask your riches of blessings, your grace to be bestowed upon our lives and we pray all of these in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless your church.